Um, <laughs> we get all of the nitric oxide vasodilation, bronchodilation, all of the good stuff which we want, which means that when we're actually practicing our hoses and we're wanting more blood to be getting into, or more oxygen from the blood to be getting into our tissues, getting it rather than it being a really strong breath which is kind of for another purpose because that's very sympathetic and you do which is kind of what you do then um that's a very sympathetic thing so it gets you revved up and it can help you with your practice but we're not going to be doing that it's going to be like beginners e slash you know breakdown poses type practice so instead being able to have a soft slow quiet not through the mouth is what we're going to aim for. Um, it's called victorious breath or um, uh, C, C breath. No, it's not that at all. Something similar. That'll come to me when we start moving. I start thinking about it. Um, uh, oceanic breath. There we go. I knew it was something to do with the fucking water. Um, so the ocean breath or um, victorious breath for some reason. So we are going to start sitting up. And there's going to be some slightly longer held poses in some of these. So like an isometric pose. So we'll be playing with some standing poses, some like warriors and stuff. Slightly longer holds than perhaps we normally do. Um, and again, so this is going to create the muscles, get a bit of a shake. And hopefully you can work with this breath always through the nose um, to get the carbon dioxide lifting, get more blood into those tissues, etc. Any questions for me? No, wunderbar. Let's hush it all up. And then let's start sitting down. I'm gonna pull my feet a little bit closer, just so I can walk up. And start kicking. Right, so just allow your eyes to close. And allow your breath to begin to soften and slow. to allow perhaps your eyes <coughs> just to find a fixed point to gaze at or just to allow them to drop heavy and close all together. As you let your eyes close, just let your shoulders also drop a little bit. Your eyes close, your shoulders drop, let your jaw drop a little bit. As your eyes close, shoulders drop, jaw drop, let your belly just soften a little bit. How many of you are holding your belly in at that point? So just take the first round. Inhale through the nose, open the mouth and just exhale as if you're just gently, quietly steaming up the mirror with just a little bit. And feel there's a slight closing in your glottis and epiglottis in the back of your throat. Now take another breath in through the nose and see if you can make a similar sound slash sensation through the nose. In that breath, seeing if you can make that exhale last for about five to six seconds. And really just work on getting as much information as you can from that little exhale. All of the sensations it brings, all of the awareness through your nose, your throat, your chest. Why it's called the oceanic breath because it's almost as if 
just stood on a cliff top and you just hear the waves rolling down the towards your spine, your ribs begin to drop. It'll almost give you a slight panicky feeling, a slight urge to breathe feeling. Just go with it. Don't try to force anything. Just take it an extra second or two beyond where you normally have. You don't have to, but if you suddenly realise that you're finding it able and impossible to keep that gentle closure of the glottis, then perhaps you can try a little inhaling with it, but try not to snort when you do it. Try not to make it. Try just to make it as quiet as as you do with the open. meditative breathing practice, you get that vibration, you get that kind of humming sensation through the nose and the face, gives you a place to focus on. And just slowly on your next exhale, use that dry breath, use that to gently round your spine. Try and do it one vertebrae at a time from your low back. Down, 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 down. down. Through the whole body. Tap hands, tap elbows, elbows to the floor. And then again on your next inhale. Be aware of your breath on your next Use that noisy breath again. Inhale, draw the arms up. So a lot of these transitions, a lot of these movements are going to be really slow, focusing on that breath more than on the movement. Bring your hands down into cactus arms as you exhale. Inhale. 
in high enough. So you're gonna really expand. Exhale, your jaw is breath. Rotate yourself towards the right, but keep your head facing forward. Inhale back to center. Exhale left. Come back in towards the center. Exhale right. If you come right, try to feel as if your shoulder blade on the right shoulder is really looking, pulling you back into that rotation. Inhale through centre, final time towards the left. Feel that left shoulder blade, feel that breath on the nose. Coming back through centre, inhale the arms up, palms to face towards the sky. Exhale, let's side bend towards your wrist. Let's go right because I'm going right, but I understand I'm going left. to the left. Inhale, up through centre. Exhale, right. Remember the breath is more important than the movement. Let the breath guide to where you go. Final time towards the left. Do you notice that all of a sudden you stop breathing? You're, You're holding.
allowing that hip and knee to keep moving around again you can take it out beside you if you want and you end up with it coming that way just gently explore both directions well all six directions i should say Slowly under you, keep tucking your bum under you, keep feeling 
your low back move. You can feel your middle back move. Don't move your weight back. It's really common to want to move your weight back. Try and keep the weight as is. And roll up, 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 up. And then once you're at the top, imagine that you're just going to let your belly drop down to the floor again. And then your ribs begin to flare open away from the front of the pelvis. And the pelvis, the rib cage keeps trying to roll through between your shoulders, between your arms. And then again, tuck your bum under you. And again, we're inhaling at this point. All the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Sometimes you might need to do that in two breaths. Your breathing patterns up, and then again that belly just drops down, and you tilt that tailbone, and then you feel as if your shoulders are also just beginning to wind in. Tuck your toes, and just sit back towards your toes, into a little uh, happy, bed. no, not happy, what's it called, child's pose, there we go. These are always lovely places to feel it. Because now you can really tune into being kind of close to that sound. Your head is on the floor. Even the quiet sound begins to reverberate back at you. So keep your pelvis as is and open your chest towards the left. If your left leg doesn't feel overly comfortable, you can turn your left foot towards the left side, of the, uh, towards the right side of the mat a little bit, and that will just help you here. So I want you to focus on this Ujjayi breath. Everything pulls together on the inhale. It almost feels like your perineum, your gooch. Then, as you exhale, it all just relaxes, belly softens, pelvic floor drops. Have a look at And you're still holding that Ujjayi breath. You're still feeling it come in and come out. Up and in. Exhale, it all just softens back down and out. If you've got your back leg turned out a little bit, just spin it back to face towards the front of your mat. Tuck your toes, use your hands if you need. We're going to lift our way up in towards a high lunge. And then from there, again, we're just going to soften towards our legs. And I want you to do exactly what you just did, but now we've got an extra leg on her knee off the floor. So one point left. Feet pushed down into the floor, pull back in towards 
towards each other. Now, what I want you to try to avoid doing is as you do this, that your right, your left hip pulls forward because this is bending your knees. I want you to keep your knees straight and that's going to force your leg out to the side. But you can still then push down through this front leg. Feel the inner thighs pulling in towards each other. Arms inhale over the head. And we breathe. Still feeling that breath on the back of your nose. And then again, we're going to now turn that left foot out. So just come out a bit for a minute and give your legs a little shake. And so we're going to come back into Warrior Two proper. So we've done it on our knees. Now we're going to do it upright. So the right foot still faces forward. I know your this leg is in a hammering. The other leg will get the hammer in, in just a few moments. So just sink your hips gently down, plow through the right foot, plow through the left. Set yourself up again. So in the same way that we were just in that other pose, the dog can just piss off for a second, where a bent knee turns the leg in. If you think in warrior two, what we're wanting the back leg to be is turned outwards. Ouch. Um, so to turn them outwards, you need that back. Right. So try to just look at your back leg for a minute and work on straightening that back knee before you put any weight forward. Just get that back knee to straighten. You should feel the outside of your ankle, outside of the foot plant down a little bit. Then drop into warrior two. Like I said, we're going to be here for just a bit longer than we normally ever do. Find this isometric hold. Feel that contraction. Everything Pull up on the inhale, on the exhale, just relax a little bit. Inhale, pull it all up. Exhale, let it sink back down. But don't let that back knee straight bend. Keep the back knee straight. Just another two of these. Nice, soft. Remember, each time we're trying to sink gently lower into the pose. Final breath. And then as you finish your final exhale, straighten your front leg, <clears throat> turn towards the front, step forward up to your uh, what we call Stamasthiti here or Tadasana, mountain pose. Ground down through both feet. Feel the breath on the back of the nose. Feel that exhale still like the ocean. And just feel how your left foot and right foot feel compared to each other. The eyes are closed. Feeling that Ujjayi breath, gently washing in, gently washing out. And then chin to chest on your next exhale. Your chin's going to drop, your shoulders are going to drop, your hands are going to drop, your spine's going to roll. We're going to gently try to come down in towards your forward fold. And your knees are going to soften. You're going to find your variation of a squat, but still using that exhale to try and drop a bit lower. Squat might be on the balls of your feet, remember. It might be flat footed. See what works for you.
those hands are going to come back down towards the floor, and we're going to step ourselves back into our child, uh, tabletop position. Same as what you did earlier, so just begin to sway yourself around, rolling your wrists, drop back towards child pose, roll forward towards a plant. That means shoulders go over the line of the wrist if you're not sure. Turn the hands out to the sides. Maybe you can draw some little circles with your rib cage again. And then let's find the hands back to where they naturally want to sit. Char, uh, cat, uh, work, yeah, cat, cat, that is the word I'm looking for. The Ujjayi breath still working, yes? Yes, good, wonderful. Relax into your uh, tabletop to begin with. That should be somewhere in that round here where there is probably going to be a natural drop in your low back because that's just naturally what your spine does. And then you're going to gently try and tuck your bum under you, really slowly. And you take two to three breaths. Try to get into your full, fierce, angry cat pose. And once you're at the top, again, two to three breaths, exhale, untuck your tailbone, feel the front of the hip bones, the front of the pelvic bones, rolling forward and down over the pelvis, over the thigh bones even, feel your belly softening down, feel the rib cage opening away from your pelvis, Feel as if your ribs still roll through your arms and you're still looking at the floor in front of you, not at the wall in front of you. One more time, tuck your tailbone, but again, take your time, two to three dry breaths. That should be the best part of 20 to 30 seconds, I reckon. Untuck that tailbone. Remember, try and feel as if your pelvis, that is the big bowl and basin of your uh, body, let it just roll over the top of your thigh bones. Let your belly drop forward. Let your rib cage drop forward. Still guide it with that Ujjayi breath. Once you're down, child pose, toes are tucked or not, your choice. And then we're going to slowly sit ourselves up on towards our knees, on towards our toes, shins, find our way up. Take your right foot, step your right foot forward between your hands. Do it again. And just take a few moments to. Set up, feel as if your left foot pushes down, pulls back, right knee pushes down, pulls forward. Inner thighs, imagine, I don't know if you saw on uh, Insta or on social media, there was a whole stupid challenge of trying to squeeze and break a watermelon between your thighs. Fuck no. But there we go. Don't do that. Just kind of imagine you're doing it now. There's a gentle inhaling. Putting everything together towards the midline. It's almost like this whole lifting upwards. And then as you exhale, you're just going to soften with that ujjayi, gently travel forward in space. Not far. You shouldn't have to go far to feel this hip. Again, inhaling, pulling it all together. And then exhaling, letting it travel forward again. We're going to add. Inhale, pull everything in, everything in, foot, knee, thighs, watermelons, arms over the head. Then exhale, right hand down behind you, left hand out in front. Again, if you want to, 
two. Turn your right foot behind you towards the left. So it's much like warrior two. Now, if you push down through this front foot and pull back, you're going to feel, if you poke the bottom of your thigh, you should feel like your hammy is nice and switched on. If you poke your calf, you might even feel a bit of calf muscle switching on. Push down, pull together, you should feel the same on the inside of your right groin. And we're going to be here for three of these breaths, 30 seconds in warrior two on our knees. Push down, pull together, draw up. Sounds reverberating around your nose, around your sinuses, around your forehead. And then releasing out. So just turn your back foot back to face towards the front. We're going to turn back towards this way. Hands and open hands, depending on how you're feeling. Push your toes, lift your back knee. From here, we're just going to let the hips sink down. And there's going to be that gentle pulling in again. So just watch your back knee. So this is my shit knee. So it's much, much harder work for me. But if my knee doesn't straighten, then I end up with a hip which faces more forward. If I can straighten this knee, you can see how this hip gets pulled back from the space. Open our hip, actually give us an extension through that hip properly. Arms come up, draw the arms up over the head. Try not to fall over like I am about to. And sink down. Your right heel is not actually on the floor, but your, your focus is getting on is, is on getting that knee to straighten and not let your big tone up lift off the floor. And you're breathing. Breathing, 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 always breathing, forever breathing, finding that jive and keep focusing on that back leg. And again, you can just gently inhale, lift your way up a little bit. So you can almost straighten your front leg and on the inhale and exhale, let the front knee just bend and drop down. Don't let the back knee bend as you drop forward and down. Again. Exhale again. One more time. Feel that gentle rolling in the throat, in the nose, in the face. And then again, let's turn that right foot out into warrior two again. You can set yourself up, so just take a moment. But then a bent knee means dropping hip in, means outside of foot off the floor. So try and gently straighten your front leg. Try and roll that right foot out, sinking your hips forward and down. Arms rise out. Again, about 35 to 40 seconds in this pose. Your hips forward and breathe. There's the inhale where everything feels like it draws up and in. And then there's the exhale where everything just relaxes down. And each time these hips perhaps, perhaps get lower. We've got another 15 seconds to go. Again, you don't have to go lower. Throw your back foot in, step yourself up to the front of your mat. Let your arms relax. Maybe 
and just bounce your feet out a little bit. And then breathe once more. How do your feet feel? How do your hips feel? How do your thighs feel? Still feel that dry breath on the back of the nose. It really doesn't take much for us to forget to do it. And then one more inhale and the exhale again. You're just going to roll everything down towards the And then bend the knees, come down to your version of a squat. And then hands back, drop down towards your bum. Hands on knees, slowly roll down on towards your back. So we're just going to take a couple of moments now to roll around the back. We're going to have a fairly slightly prolonged shavasana, mainly so we can really focus again. A little bit of breathing in stillness. Wide angle, do that. that. Breathing's the best part, anyway. Feet down to the floor. Just windscreen wipers, your knees left and right. And then let's take a happy baby. So bend those knees, grab hold of your feet through your thighs. Just gently rolling around. And then let those legs go long. Let your body relax down. So we're going to just play for the next kind of three to four minutes before we take Shavasana proper, just with some breath work using this Ajayi breath. breath. And so it's going to be all on the exhale, I'm not worrying too much about the inhale, but the inhale is just going to get drawn in as you normally do. Belly or the ribs, low ribs in the belly begin to come down to three seconds. And then we breathe in. And then the upper chest, ribs, belly. And then we get up. Continue this simple little prolonged exhale, focusing on the three parts of your breath, the three parts of your ribs that, or of your torso that we're going to try to move from. The, the upper chest, which is our more kind of auxiliary muscles, the ones we use a lot more when we're in our sympathetic state. And then we get into the 
those reds in around the intercostals. Some of that bit around where the diaphragm attaches and then down towards the bottom of the ribs and the belly. I'm just feeling those different cavities fill and empty. And you might find that three seconds in each one is really easy. And so perhaps you want to do four or seven or 25 or 152 seconds or whatever it might be for each section. I wouldn't recommend 152 seconds. let those three sections get moved independently. The greater we can control we can find of our ribs, of our diaphragm and our belly and our shoulders and our shoulder girdle, the greater our capacity to empty our lungs. You see that the less breaths we have to take. And then we can be more like the turtle, and less like the rabbit. Breathe slower for a longer life. One more of these little oh, three and threes. Yeah, you're still just gently feeling that dry on the back of the nose and the throat in and around your sinuses. I've mentioned it before, but this gentle humming that's created by this ujjayi helps to increase the production of nitric oxide within the nose, which is really one of our first lines of defense against bacteria and viral infections. Increasing it by 15 to 20 percent every breath. There is legitimately Pharmaceutical companies making nasal sprays which do this. So rather than spending money on a nasal spray, let's just learn to breathe through our nose better. So we're now just into the final part of your shavasana. So you can let go of the ujjayi now, you can just return to your normal breathing pattern, you can just let everything relax, you can let your hands find somewhere comfortable if they're not already, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes can all just relax. Your forehead, your cheeks and your jaw, Shoulders and your belly, your fingers and your toes, everything just eases off to its place of natural centeredness. One more minute here then, just letting the whole body soften, relax, remind 
on yourself but the simple breath that we've been practicing throughout is really easy to do in your day to day life. It doesn't have to be a big noisy thing, it can be something easily hidden, it can be something that you can easily do when things get a bit busy and stressful. It's going to deliberately slow your breathing down. It's going to emphasize that parasympathetic nervous. Whenever you're ready, begin to find your fingers and toes wriggle. Of course, if you've got nothing else to do today, I would implore you to stay here for another seven hours. But if you have things to do, let your knees gently draw up. Let your arms gently hug them. Find yourself over on your left side. position, a little place of safety, and then, then whenever you're ready, rolling up to a nice comfortable seated position, eyes closed, crown lifting, spine tall, and then just gently rolling your way forward, down over your legs, down towards the floor, but can't stop stuff, you can never bump to. Happy and free. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Thank you.